Okay, so we're rolling here. So Mike, what date is it today? 17th. Of what? August 18th, 2010, right? Right. I don't even know what year it is. Alright, so what's this piece here? This is a, this is a paper cutout made into a silk screen. These are pre-Columbian snakes. And it has like these little milagros attached to it. It's Frida Kahlo as a mermaid putting a guitar. And I, it was a popular symbol I used. And basically a lot of my artwork are, are really, they're, they're not the subject matter, they're color schemes. So it's just like painting technique versus silk screen scene. And how do you make it pop out? So it's kind of like pre-Columbian pop, let's just say. So this is another Frida Kahlo, another version. And then these are pre-Columbian seashells. And then a turtle and a toad, because I, I like those animals a lot. And there's no, so I'm, not, I'm not really good at stretching canvases. So this is just a collage of pre-Columbian idol in the bathroom brushing her hair with the mirror in the reflections of a woman. Here's some Milagro eyes, and behind it are a bunch of money symbols, like from um, those things, you, those scratches you find on the floor. So I try to be contemporary and, and as not mock. Uh, it's very hard with Chicanos because they're very old-fashioned still, and they always do everything really neat. And I'm kind of a sloppy artist, and I like everything to look rugged because I work in Oaxaca. Like this is one of the artists I work with. I mean, maybe the framing's neat, but the artwork's very, um, let's say, touche, like very, kind of like, dirt. it really reflects the land, actually. You know, it's a really red and brown country, and it looks like that. And lots of times the artwork that's done in a lot of places here in LA and San Francisco, it's too cleaned up. So I give it that roughness. It's like if you were in a Mexican church, or in a cave, or in a shaman's cave, or in a village, and to me, this looks exactly like the adobe walls, you know, whatever, or a church, like how it works. So I'll mix up things like the devil, Milagros. This is a symbol for the Mana Magica. There's this hand. But also, I, I know how to make inks rise. Like you put them in the sun, they, they rise a lot. And I'm not afraid to use latex, house paints, oil base, and, and water base together and throw in some spray paint just to get like a surface going. So it, it's, they're not always flat. There's another figure, I really do. And it's not that just like Frida, it's more like the composition. How do you make it work? Because once you start this, you gotta keep going. So the background's really this, you can see this goggle-eyed god, which is a rain god. And I like that screen, because I, 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 I instinctively know that these are good background patterns, because I work with fashion in New York. And then, well, once you print it, great. You're, you go over it with these Milagros and then the Frida. And then the Frida is important, so you make that darker and then these wider. So you play games. It's almost like a pinball game machine. Like, you know, you're trying to ring up points. So it comes from playing with toys as a kid and looking at um, well, pinball machines in Germany. Like, how, you know, you have one of the lights light up. How do you make it light up? So a lot of them are the same subject matter. It's just how do you make it different? So it's, this one is really just a pattern versus um, the yellow and green versus the red and gold. And I've been really blessed to work for Marino Sandoval and Carlos and given the opportunity to play this game. And I, that's why I'm worried about that the team's going to be over soon where I won't get to play anymore. <laughs> and I get a real thrill of doing stuff like this. Because most people would just print the hand and then go around here and stuff, but it's like again, it's like a pinball game. Boing, 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 boing. And then putting it black and then going back with a gold. And then actually this makes this kind of go back, but it's, they're both popping up. They're all popping up the same, so they're all just as important. So it's not necessarily the subject matter, but it's also the awe-ness of what I feel for, um, you know, well, the grandeur of these villages. I don't really go to Mexico City, and I don't like the, the, the museums. I like more the villages. Because those people, they have a more honest way of seeing the world. So they live so close to the earth that I think their art works better because it's more respectful or it comes from the soul. So I always try and just reflect, you know, being in, from Mexico. That was a big inspiration for me, it's Oaxaca. And so what's this piece here with? 
just a, a, uh, an indigenous woman and then Zapata. So it's like somehow this is all tied together with these things. None of them have any titles. When I did them, I just did them. So are these all from this year? Or? Some are from this year. Like, this Sometimes I can frame things, other times I can't. So I'm, I'm known more for spray painting and then still screen behind it to make it pop up. And this is just, I did my, it's a favorite thing about it, Petro La Mancha. It's a church and shop that they went to. And then I, I did this for a guy who, who did a benefit. And we made the poster and he let me make a bunch of canvases. So I brought these back from Pasadena. And I just like this. This was used in that book that I gave you, right? Morelli's mother. I'm in another book now. Uh, What's it called? So that was a mission art graffiti book, right? Yeah, the Toshin book that's coming out in September. It's the same image, this, this thing. Mm. And they're interested in doing a book on me, this German company, but where am I going to do that? I'm running out of space in the studios. Like, I, they, see, the girl's going to try and come up and see me and sing over, I forget her name, Myrtle or something like that. <laughs> it's always a weird thing. She's Japanese. But anyway, they, they, they would like to take a picture of all this stuff. Yeah, like I did this whole gallery in the mission, and uh, Moreno couldn't afford it, so he gave it a Chucho, and Chucho took all my art and threw it away. And th this stuff were masterpieces to me, like they were all framed. Like giant angels, giant virgins. You know, he's kind of like this all the time. Not with me, but with all artists. You know, and he runs a club, he's in a gallery. So they took it down and made it like a dark room where people do a party. So, you know, so like I keep losing stuff. So I'm lucky to get all the stuff back. You know. Move this stuff out of the way so we can get that that piece there. It's so tremendous. Or people don't paint, like that dumb show in, in LA and stuff that I did. And because things are so bad in Mexico, I feel like if I go down there, I'll get killed. <laughs> so that's why I'm scared of hauling it all down there just to get my head chopped off. <laughs> Look, I did these big fabrics on that table. Not that table, I'm going to get you counted. Wow. Wow. That's this thing is huge. There you go. Wow. That's like an entire wall piece there, huh? Yeah. Oil base. But you go nuts. When you do the little ones, you get bigger and bigger and bigger until finally you start knocking out. You, like this one out, this is another Frida. And then this tiger. And then my, this is jewelry. It's like a rain symbol. And then a moon. And the same thing. So you, you kind of go nuts doing this stuff. I love this piece. And it has a lot of texture. That's why I like it. It's not flat. That's fantastic. So that's oil on canvas, right? Uh-huh. Here's a Santana angel. He's just on a honeymoon. He can't be bothered. Well, that's nice. He married some girl that went to Wendy's school, Wendy and Nesbitt. So she must be in Rio. In Ohio? Yeah. 